Hi there, this is Alana. Welcome to another episode of the Praying Christian Women podcast. Today we are taking one of your questions to do a coffee break episode. If you have questions that you want us to cover or discuss, you can submit those at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. And today we're going to be talking about just discerning God's voice versus our own voice versus whoever else might be trying to get us to think that it's God talking to us. So I think it's going to be a really good one. So today's actual question is from a listener named Teresa who asks, how can I discern what is the Lord speaking to me instead of my own thoughts or something more sinister while praying? So um, before we get started, Alana is going to open us up with a word of prayer. God, I just thank you for Teresa. I thank you for her desire to hear your voice. I thank you for all the women listening who really just wants to hear from you. And I pray that you would speak to us, not only through this episode, but just in our day-to-day and help us to draw closer to you as we discuss this topic, Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, so where do you want to start with this? I kind of feel like before you even get into the question of whose voice you're hearing um, when you're when you're praying, I think we might need to self-examine, like do some evaluation of a couple of things. And when mm-hmm. I was thinking about this, I was thinking a couple of things that we need to evaluate is our view of God and our own motives. And I think, you know, understanding our view of God, I think is kind of important um, because before discerning his voice, um, I think we need to know if we have an accurate view of of who God is and how he views us and who we are in his eyes. Like for instance, I could see someone who's praying like, God, you know, show me, show me areas where, where I can uh, be a better person. And they might just hear like condemnation and like, just feel, uh, come away from that prayer feeling beaten down. And Mm -hmm instead of inspired or, you know, freed from things. And I think that, um, that that could come from viewing God as sinister or antagonistic or unkind or unloving. And that might go back to some blocks that we have about who God is and who we are in his eyes. And that might take some, you know, I don't know, just recognizing truth. So I don't know that. And then on the other hand, I could see like where I've, I've aired before, I think is, assuming that I'm always going to hear good things from God because he is loving and he is Mm -hmm. encouraging. But I think sometimes I drown out the rebuke or the, um, I don't know, call to live a more Mm Christ-like life. Or So I think maybe just kind of if you are in a place of like, I just don't know where to begin evaluating how you view God and looking biblically at who God is and who you are in God's eyes to get you kind of in a place of seeing more clearly or hearing more clearly. Yeah. And I think also we can look at things kind of as a partnership because sometimes maybe you're praying for wisdom about a situation and an idea comes to your head and maybe it really is just something that your own subconscious mind was working through, Mm -hmm. but in my mind, that still is God answering your prayer. And so sometimes I'm not even sure that it matters as much as we make it out to matter. Does that make sense? Does that sound totally blasphemous? No, I think that's embracing God's sovereignty in our own imperfections. You know, God can be sovereign through our own inner voice, as long as it's not tearing us down or, you know, there, there's a a bit of discernment there, but no, I, I totally believe that, that God is totally sovereign. It reminds me of, a time when I was just reading about, uh, we were in the middle of a decision-making process and I read about um, Samson Mm -hmm. and how Mm -hmm. Samson desired this Philistine woman. And that wasn't godly. He was supposed to be marrying a Hebrew woman and his parents Mm -hmm. were angry, but his father, and I'm paraphrasing here, so forgive me people, but I, I think his father said, God, this isn't right. We've got to do something. Samson can't marry this Philistine woman. And God was like, who are you to say that I'm not big enough to use Samson's corrupt desires or selfish Mm -hmm. motives to bring about my will. So I totally see that as being biblical. 
Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's not even necessarily, you know, a sinful desire. It really is just our own wisdom. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but God's using that to direct us or even our desires. Like I heard someone once and this was a very glib response and he was a missionary and it was, well, how did you know that God wanted you to be a missionary to this particular region? And he said, oh, it's so easy because that was the one particular region I never wanted to go to. And I just... <laughs> You know, like I heard this as a kid and of course what I gleaned from it then is, oh, okay, so if God talks to you, it's going to be clear that it's God because he's going to tell you to do things that you don't want to do. And sometimes he will, but I feel like that's very much the exception. Often he will be just shaping your desires to be wanting to do the things that he wants anyway, you know? Well, and this person, you know, Teresa is asking this question and she wants to hear God's voice. She's saying, yeah. I want to discern God's voice. Mm -hmm. And so she's already on the right track. You know, Teresa, you are already at a place where your heart is open for God speaking to you. But I think that brings up a really good point though, Alana, is that we can sometimes get into this kind of stoic mode of, mm -hmm. you know, like some people say, don't pray for patience because God's going to test you or <laughs> right. don't say you'll never do something because then God will make it happen. And that could happen. But, but I think we get into this thing of, well, if I want it, then it's bad. And if right. I don't want it, then I guess I'd have to do that to make God happy. And yeah, I think yeah, that's dangerous. God, yeah. God, like you said, he's sovereign enough and big enough to be working in a lot of different areas. He's mm -hmm. working in our desires. He's working in our subconscious. He's working in our yeah. circumstances. And I feel like all of those things taken together can, in most cases, really direct us. You know, he speaks through us, through the Bible, through others. And often, if he's trying to get a message across to you, he's going to be using a lot of those methods. Um, one of the most helpful prayers that I've prayed. So for example, I had a pretty, uh, what's what I'm looking for, like dramatic experience when I was first getting to know my husband, Scott, and felt super clearly that God was telling me through the Holy Spirit, this is the man you're going to marry. And I was afraid to believe that for many, many different reasons. And I, I wanted to be very careful, which I, I think people should be careful with something like that. But one of the most helpful prayers for me was to say, okay, God, this is what I think you're saying. And if I'm way off base, please correct me. You know, I kind of yeah. think of like the GPS, how um, like just yesterday I had to get somewhere and all it showed was the road, but I had to pull out of a parking lot and I couldn't tell which way I was supposed to go. So I just like, okay, I'm just going to go somewhere. And of course, then it had me do a U-turn. But sometimes you just have to kind of start before it can correct. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And it reminds me of the, the scripture, which I was thinking about is um, Isaiah 30, 21. And your ears shall hear, hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. When you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. And, but it's like, they will hear that voice Mm -hmm. when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left so that it is, I love that GPS analogy <laughs> because, you know, not to minimize God, but that's really um, the way that I think sometimes it really does work. In my case, I actually heard what I thought was God's voice saying, this is the man you're going to marry. And, right. this is college. and, it, and it was, yeah. mm -hmm. and he very clearly showed me later on. And I don't doubt that that person being in my life was part of my path. You know, it was God was right. sovereign in that and mm -hmm. believing that that was the person that I was supposed to marry, maybe in some way, I don't know, we could debate all day long about we that. <laughs> God is sovereign. Yeah. And I think that's the bottom line is when you're seeking him, he's going to show you. So I like that. Don't not to feel paralyzed, right. but to start moving in a direction if you you know, and, and God will correct you. Have faith that he'll correct you. if that's And ask him to correct you. That's what helps yes. me to feel the most secure is how many times I said, okay, God, if this isn't where I'm supposed to be going, please, please, please show me. And like, I would even say it like, God, you know, I'm stupid. You know, I'm thick headed. Yes. And sometimes, you know, I love how we started this, Jamie, with your um, warning about just how we view God. Because I feel like sometimes we can view God as very whimsical and capricious and he'll be like, maybe he's going to whisper one thing to you one time. And if you do it, your life's going to be changed forever in this amazing way. And if you don't, he's going to send you down this road of, you know, like thorns and destruction. Yeah. And 
you know, like, sure, he has the right to do that. And I, I don't think that every single person's guaranteed an infinite number of second chances, you know, but I also feel like if you're really being open, which again, goes back to Teresa's question, and you want to hear God's voice, and you tell him you want to hear God's voice, and you're surrendered, meaning that whether he says go to the right or to the left, you know, sometimes we can say, well, I'm ready to hear God's voice as long as he tells me what I want to hear, you know, and that is your own desires, speaking louder than God's voice. But I feel like the closer we are to the Lord and the more surrendered we are to him, I think those are the two big factors that really work together to to make it so not necessarily that we'll have a hundred percent track record of hearing from him perfectly, but so that we can be corrected if we need to be. Oh, absolutely. And you know that and the own motives thing, you know, I think for me personally, the one uh the one area I, I think we know the areas that we need to put on the altar. Like if you go into prayer mm-hmm. That is one place, you know, yes, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart, but that doesn't necessarily mean delight in your desires and God will give them to you, you know? That's a good point. (laughs) And so I I think there are times if we're really honest and we're really seeking and you're having a hard time knowing, there might be a time, and I've had several times in my life, including the the relationship that I was talking about, the guy, (laughs) and where I've had to lay that on the altar and really be honest and say, okay, yeah. God, but pray the prayer. I don't have the strength to relinquish this to you. I can mm-hmm. say it with my words, but my heart wants this. And yeah. like, just like you did. And, and it's mm-hmm. too, I love the way God does that. You know, you and I have these two parallel, right. <laughs> two totally different outcomes. And, yeah. um, and it's, it's totally, uh, evidence of God's sovereignty in both cases. So it that's, is. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and I'm pretty sure we've said it before on the podcast, but that's just the, the whole concept that nobody does hear from God perfectly 100% of the time. For example, when Silas, our middle son, was born with so many health issues and on a feeding tube, I could have told you, I, you know, if we were podcasting back then, I probably would have said on the podcast, God's told me he's going to be off this feeding tube and he's going to be eating on his own by the time he's three. And that's not what happened. Now he is off his feeding tube, but that didn't happen until he was six. And so I feel like we we don't need to second guess every single thing that we think we hear from God, but we also need to realize, okay, this might not really be, this might just be what I want to hear. So I just feel like there's a lot of need for wisdom and discernment. But, you know, Teresa had a second part to this question that I don't want to ignore. So she says, How can I discern when it's God speaking to me instead of my own thoughts or something more sinister when praying? So Mm -hmm. I think we've done a good job talking about, you know, is this coming from me or is this coming from God? But what about this other thing? Like, do you ever get worried? Like, okay, this is either God or this is the devil kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, (laughs) there are times uh, there just the other day, there are things that I speak out loud sometimes when I'm by myself about myself or, you know, like just muttering under my breath about Mm -hmm. myself. I'm like, that was, that was like, that was Satan's voice behind me, Satan, you know, not that I'm demonically Mm -hmm. possessed or anything. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that phrase was a demonic whisper. I mean, really. And so, um, I think it is important and I do, um, but I'm, I recognize those overt lies, but I think we need to be careful. You know, Satan, he's a a prowling lion, you know, prowling Mm -hmm. around and not that every moment of every day we're being inundated by demonic voices, but I think it's important to recognize the character of demonic influences or your own self-damaging voice. That's a good point. I don't know how to discern between those two. Yeah. And discernment, really, it does come down a lot to discernment because, um, wow, totally just lost my train of thought. (laughs) (laughs) Whether it's, you know, whether it's the devil. Oh, I remember where I was going. So for example, if I am trying to make a pretty big decision and I really am nervous about hearing from God wrong, one of the things I like to do is just kind of open my time in prayer with praise 
because I feel like that absolutely a it gets you into the right mental and spiritual mindset. But I also feel like the devil, or you know, I don't I don't believe that most day to day Christians have like actually experienced an encounter by Satan himself because he's not omnipresent. But you know, there are demons and stuff. Um, and the devil and demons, I feel, don't want to be in the presence of a Christian who is praising God. And so I feel like sometimes even just starting your prayer times with some praise and just this, this idea that, you know, demons flee at the name of Jesus. A, a demon cannot confess that Jesus is the Son of God. So even just starting by confessing those sorts of things, do it out loud if you want to. I feel like that can definitely give power. And then I think a lot of it really does come down to discernment. And Jamie, I feel like maybe you and I, have, have you told me before that you feel like discernment's one of your spiritual gifts? Um, it, I don't know exactly. Maybe. maybe. Okay. <laughs> maybe. I mean, discern, yes. I might you strike yeah, me I, as a discerning person. Well, thank so, you. I think that was on one of my, like, you know, you do the Bible study or the yeah, test or whatever. Yeah. I think that came up as one of them. I feel like both you and I do have at least some degree, even if it's not on the level of a spiritual gift, you know, we are, we are discerning, intuitive people. And if you're not then maybe it's time to ask somebody else that you do feel has the gift of discernment. Like just say, Hey, this is what I think God's saying to me. Does this sound like on track to you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, um, and I think in that case, um, just confirmation from the Bible can really come in, you know, Mm -hmm. just the Bible as a litmus test. Does this That's sound, exactly where I was going to go. Yeah. yeah. Well, go ahead. I want to, I don't want to hijack your train of thought or no, your, no, no. I hijacked yours. Your so you can <laughs> um, no, that, that the, the biblical confirmation is definitely the other side of the coin. I think the first side of the coin is knowing the characteristic characteristics of the enemy's voice, like lies about who you yeah. are, mm-hmm. accusation or condemnation. If you come out of prayer time feeling defeated, Mm -hmm. instead of victorious, tearing down others, if your thoughts involve tearing down others. Also, I've heard of things like people having affairs with other people while they're married and saying, well, God told me I need to be with this person, Mm -hmm. you know, things like that that go against, but, you know, follow your heart first is another kind of, you know, not Mm -hmm. the voice of God. Um, Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, the other side of that coin of knowing characteristics of the enemy's voice or the not God voice is, is knowing who God is and, and just, does this align with scripture? Absolutely. And we see that with Jesus being tempted in the wilderness, you know, it was scripture that he came back with. And once, so um, in this whole process, I, I shared the start of the story where I felt God had told me that Scott and I were going to be married. And then um, the super abbreviated version is that we were unofficially engaged, planning on getting engaged soon. And then for a whole lot of reasons, which is going to take way too long to get into, we broke up. I thought I wasn't going to ever hear from him again, see him again. Um, really, really bizarrely, we actually hadn't met face to face yet. So like I wasn't going to ever even meet him. So super, super long story, too long to get into. But at one point, and I remember that it was November 2nd, and I felt God speaking to me at a Sunday school class saying, in 60 days, you're going to be engaged to Scott. And I sat on that for a while and just sort of did that praying like I talked about, like, God, if this isn't you, I, need, I really need you to let me know because this just sounds absolutely bizarre and mm-hmm. weird. And yes, I would love for it to come true. So maybe it is just my own deceitful heart. And so what I asked is I said, will you please confirm this in scripture? Because at the time I couldn't even think of another example of when God gave someone a time frame that specific. Right. So I was just like, oh, can you please confirm this in scripture? It was the very next day that I was reading in, I'm pretty sure it was Jeremiah. And it's when God says super clearly, your captivity is going to be 70 years long, you know, and wow. it wasn't even, um, I mean, that's just where I was in reading the book straight through. I'm like, okay, well that, 
that answers that. And, but even so, I talked to a couple other Christians because I'm like, this sounds really weird to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I am very open to being led by the Spirit. And this was way out of my comfort zone <laughs> to, to not only say, yes, you're going to marry this guy, which I didn't have a hard time believing could, you know, that God could tell somebody that, but to give a specific date that we were going to be engaged by. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the reason I remember it was November 2nd is because New Year's Eve would be the 60 days from that. And we were engaged the, the day before. <laughs> so. Wow. That is really neat. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, you know, again, discernment's key. Confirming with scripture is key. Confirming with other believers is key. And I think also just remaining humble, always realizing nobody's going to hear perfectly and, and that's okay. And so I think, with this whole 60 day thing, I had to, I I kind of was at this point where, yes, I totally believe that this is true, but I also might've been completely hoodwinked. And if it doesn't happen, it's my fault, not God's. Do you know what I mean? That you're not, you're not basing, you know, your concept of God on this because he never lies, (laughs) you know? So if it doesn't come true, you did not hear this from God. (laughs) And I think there's something even in the Bible about that. Like, you know, any spirit that, that, uh, basically speak something that comes to pass is God. And if it doesn't, it's not. I mean, there's something I, I'm. Oh yeah. Well, that's the test of the prophets in the Old Testament. If it comes true, then that was God's voice. (laughs) If it doesn't, that's a false prophet. (laughs) Right. And so, you know, and I had a similar thing happen where I, you know, it was when we were trying to decide whether to continue homeschooling our oldest son, or we just felt like we were being led to put him in public school. And Mm -hmm. my husband and I were both really conflicted on both sides. We didn't know what to do. And and we had our ideas. I wanted to keep homeschooling him deep down. um, And I asked God to give me wisdom. And I I prayed specifically for scripture. So at the time I was reading Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby, and I was going through some of these chapters and I came to one chapter that was, um, I won't go into the exact thing that it said, but basically it gave me a anecdotal reference backed up with scripture that was very similar that to me spoke, you mm-hmm. need to trust that you're being called to put him in public school. And I didn't, and I was like, but I don't believe that. No, God, that's not enough. Cause maybe I'm just reading into it. You know, mm-hmm. maybe I'm just trying mm-hmm. to look for something and like, the next day there was a scripture that I was reading in an independently uh, and it totally spoke to me. And um, that one was talking about Jesus prayer for his, his disciples that, you know, like I'm sending them like sheep among wolves and I don't pray. Cause that was the phrase that, that kept coming to me is, is I'm sending them out like a sheep among mm-hmm. wolves, not that yeah. public school is wolves, but this was no, my can, picture yeah. from going yeah. from homeschool to there. And, um, and Jesus said, I pray not that you would, take them out of the world, but you would protect them from the evil one. And I read directly into that. Okay. He will protect him from anything negative that I fear that he will be exposed to or whatever. And so anyway, he is now in public school and mm-hmm. in the last year has been confirmation that this was a great choice that he's doing well. He's where he's supposed to be and he's thriving and God is at work. So yeah, that's just another example where just keep on asking if you're not sure. And, Mm -hmm. and again, if we had put him in public school, we, we didn't know when we made that decision, if it was the right one. And my husband and I have very rarely come to a big decision with 100% confidence that it was God's Mm -hmm. will. Mm -hmm. We always have questions and you just have to, you know, kind of keep asking and keep moving forward and not be discouraged. And I know that this question wasn't specifically about decision making it was just in general hearing god's voice mm-hmm. but decision making is a big time when you will be looking for his words yeah well and i love that you included john 10 27 in our notes for this episode jamie so we can close with that just my sheep listen to my voice i know them and they follow me and the closer we're walking with the lord the the more we are going to recognize his voice mm-hmm. and you know we're going to be ready to be rescued if we start going down the wrong path because we'll be in submission to him we'll be in the word we'll be running this by other people as well you know your decision about homeschool wasn't made in a vacuum you know we we talked about it you and i prayed about it you and your husband you know there were many other factors besides just what might have been a whim during right. a prayer time mhm yeah 
Well, should we move on to our prayers for the unsaved? Yeah, let's do that. Um, Teresa, thank you for that question. And we just really, we will be praying for you for just being able to hear God's voice more and more clearly. Um, but now we're going to, we've begun including prayers for the unsaved in our coffee break episodes. So we would like to just take this time to pray for the one to three people that God has put in your, on your heart to be praying for in the long term. And um, I'll just read through this prayer and you can pray along with us. Dear Father, I thank you and praise you for making me your own. Thank you for inviting me into your family. Thank you for adopting me as your child, even though I was so unworthy. Today, Lord, I pray that you would grant that same gift to my friend. May they know the joys that come from being part of your family. Show them that you're the kind and generous father. Show them how much you love them. Whether their own experiences with their earthly parents were positive or negative, let them see you as their gracious heavenly father. I know that you love my friend as a father. Please show them yourself so they can cry out to you, their Abba Father. Amen. Amen. And again, if you want to send us your questions for these Coffee Break episodes, you can submit them at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. So thanks again. And before we go, let's just wrap up with a word of prayer. And um, we will be praying for Teresa too. We haven't done that yet, have we? No, not yet. Okay. <laughs> So, and then I'm like, wait, did we just do that? No, we, we said we pray. would be praying for her, but That's we will actually we pray for her. Now we will actually pray because for her. Because we are praying Christian women. <laughs> right. Well, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we thank you so much for Teresa. I pray, um, just like Jamie wished for her also, just that she could hear your voice clearly and know that it's you. I pray that you would be guiding each of us in all the decisions that we have to make and that we would be open and surrender to hearing your voice, Lord. Thank you so much for our listeners. We pray your tremendous blessing over each of them today and over the unsaved people that they've been praying for as we do um, the prayers for the unsaved at these shows too, God. Just thank you for all the ways you've protected us and watched over us. And we lift this up in Jesus' name. Amen.